All right, so this is an update video on this little REST API framework I'm building with Node. Um, I wanted to share a feature I added that's kind of built into this framework by default. And uh, I'm kind of taking inspiration from TRPC and um, the T3 stack. But one of the things I'm trying to do is inside of your route-based endpoints, you can provide inputs and outputs, right? And what the framework does is it's automatically going to parse and validate that the input that comes in has to match this object. And then also the output that goes out has to match this object as well, the schema. So let me kind of demo that. I'm going to go ahead and just run this little REST API here. And then I'll load up Thunder Client. Go here. And we're going to go ahead and just do a git request on todos and make sure that some data comes back, which it does. And we're going to do a post request to todos and make sure we can insert data. So to kind of demo out the validation, I want to go ahead and just insert another GG here. And you'll notice that it allows you to kind of do that. If you wanted to make it more strict, you could actually put a dot strict at the end of this object. And that should throw an error next time I hit this endpoint because I'm passing too much data to the endpoint and that is not allowed because I made it strict. All this validation is just Zod. Basically the framework is just passing a Zod object and it's kind of doing the parsing and the checking for you automatically. But the interesting part about this is additionally, um, if you were to send back too much information, uh, let's say for some reason there's like a password on the to-dos here and you sent that back, right? Well, what you could potentially do is you could make this a strict check and if password was set, you don't get any TypeScript um, IntelliSense because this is actually um, a superset of this object. So you don't see errors. But if I were to try to do a Git request and some data comes back that has a password, you'll see that when I do that post, it actually throws an error saying that unrecognized keys and object passwords. So again, the, the idea is that everything that comes in and out of your API, you should probably validate it. And in some cases, you should make it strict so that you don't leak data that you don't want to leak from your database into your front end. So those are the main changes I did with this framework. I did want to kind of point out that I did refactor the way that you set up your handlers and you do. Ref I did refactor the way that you set up your shuttle server. So now when you call shuttle, before it used to like give you an ENV file and you had to like get the type of it and export it and import that everywhere. I don't know if that was in the last video I made, but now when you create a shuttle app, it gives you back a create handler function. And that's the function that you have to use in all of your different files. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to get IntelliSense um, autocomplete for both these input and output objects, right? If I say input here and do a dot, notice that I do get the IntelliSense set up. And this thing is basically taking the type and putting it into input. Same thing with output here. If I were to accidentally forget something, like if I were to return a string, um, like hello, you will see that this fails because the output is expecting a particular format right here. It says it needs a text string, ID string, and we are passing it a promise string, okay? So this type, the thing that you return here, I'm using generics to basically take the object and check that the thing you're returning in this function matches the, the schema of the output here. And again, the original goal of this whole framework was for me to get better at TypeScript. So let me share with you the TypeScript that I had to figure out to get that all set up because this really dives heavy into generics. And before doing this, I didn't really have a great idea about how generics work, but after doing this, I actually understand much better how generics works. So I'm gonna give you a little walkthrough of like how the generics work in if you're trying to understand TypeScript a little bit better, I would stick around because this would hopefully help you understand generics a little bit more. Okay, so we have a function that we call called shuttle and that returns a create handler, right? Now, I wanna show you the create handler. If I go down here, this is what the function looks like. And it leans heavy into generics. You see here I have an I, oops, I, O, U, or I, O, and E. Basically what a generic does is that you can have this, this set of symbols. I don't think the ordering of these things matter. Like if I were to switch these around, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have a set of unique symbols or tokens, or I don't know what you wanna call them. And you can use these anywhere in your function definition to basically 
apply types and um, infer types. Okay, so we're saying we have a function. It has three types that we need to basically keep track of, uh, E, I, and O. And when you pass in options, we are passing a create handler option here that also needs to keep track of an I, O, and E. Okay, let me undo that so they're in the right order. So what you can do is you, you declare these generic symbols and anywhere that you were to attach them to some type of input parameter or output, it's basically going to infer the type that you passed in um, like here. So for example, let me just show you, I, you might be confused because I'm just confusing myself right now. How do we make this input have the same type as whatever this input function happens to return here? And more specifically, this thing is not even the Zod object. This thing is the inferred return of the Zod object. So in the generic, we had to take in an I and we had to pass that to the options here, okay? Now the options again, this is gonna take your, your input, your output, and your handler. These are just, this is just an object that requires these three fields, which we see here, input, output, and handler. And we have this typed as a function that returns an I, okay? So just because I put an I here, now TypeScript basically infers that, okay, the symbol I is going to refer to whatever the heck this thing is. Okay, and same thing with the output, right? Output, the symbol O is going to infer whatever this return type is. Okay, so this is gonna be a Zod object. If I change this to a string, then O would be like a string. And what I'm doing is that now in the handler, this thing, I'm saying it takes an input, which is actually Zod.infer of I. So it basically takes whatever this is at the time, and then it's going to infer the type from that, which is why I can go down here and I can say input dot text, because I'm basically saying that this is I, and this is infer of I, okay? And then same thing with O. If you look at the handler, I'm typing the handler function to say, hey, this thing returns a promise of Z infer O. So whatever this thing happens to be, I'm inferring it, and I'm passing back an O. And that's why I get the IntelliSense for when I were to potentially forget something in the output, it, it, TypeScript yells at me. All right, so that's how I got the IntelliSense set up with like the inputs and the outputs and got that all type safe. Something else I'm trying to figure out, which I broke, is inside of this main file here where you create a, a, a shuttle app, you specify an environment variable and you can specify what environment variables are needed when you kind of spin up this server. Okay, so same idea, there is a shuttle definition here that takes in a T. And that T is used to infer the environment that you have set up here, right? Um, now, the only issue with this is that I think I have something messed up where I'm not getting the TypeScript fully passed around. So I need to kind of figure out why that's not working. Because I'm taking the, e, the T that's passed in and I'm passing it to E here. Uh, so I don't know why. Yeah, I can't really figure this out right now. But that's something I'm just trying to you know work on is like, how do you actually make this stuff super type safe and that you get like IntelliSense for everything and like how do you achieve that with writing the least amount of code as possible because before, I think another change I did was like I just made a function here that you pass a, a thing like a value and it's going to infer the type from that so if you look at this create injection key again this is a function that has a generic t and I'm saying hey whatever you know is passed in whatever the type is of this value passed in we're going to use that type and we're gonna create a new symbol and use an injection key with that type. So that's why you go back over here when you call this function and you hover over the symbol, it is already typed with the function. Like if you see here, it says this is a injection key that has a function that returns a promise of to-dos inside of its type. So that's kind of like the idea of generics and how you can use them. You basically can just infer types by putting symbols next to parameters or options that are passed in. And then you can use those things throughout your code base so that when you call that function later on, TypeScript understands, okay, the thing that was passed in is actually gonna be related to the thing that's being sent back out as output. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you wanna to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other developers and just ask questions if you're lost. Have a good day and happy coding.